So our first presenter, uh, Nat Katz, is a lecturer in the Department of Religious Studies and Classics at the University of Arizona. Before coming to Arizona, he earned his BA in Classics and History from Kenyon College and his PhD in Classics from the University of Texas at Austin. He is a Roman historian researching Roman imperial self-representation and regime change. Though he has long been a metalhead, this is his first foray into combining that interest with his interest in the ancient world. So please welcome Nat and his presentation, Carthage in Metal Music. Take it away. Thank you. And before I get started, I do want to briefly note that I will uh, quote some racist and anti-Semitic uh, rhetoric partway through this presentation. So be warned about that. With that, let's get started. So I'll be talking about the role that the ancient civilization Carthage plays in metal music. Now, before I get to the metal itself, let me briefly introduce Carthage for those of us who don't spend all of our days reading about the ancient Mediterranean. So Carthage was a Phoenician colony that turned into an ancient Mediterranean empire. It contested control of the Western Mediterranean with Rome in three wars known as the Punic Wars, before ultimately being destroyed by Rome in 146 BCE. Today, Carthage is known exclusively through Greco-Roman sources and archaeology because no Carthaginian sources survive. There are, so far as I can tell, 264 metal songs that are entirely about or at least reference Carthage. Those songs were recorded between 1982 and 2023 by 187 bands from 37 different countries. Like I'm imagining many of us here, I compiled this list by using the incredible resource of metal archives and doing searches for Carthage, Punic, Hannibal, and any other proper name vaguely connected to Carthage that I could think of. So I wanna contextualize these numbers a bit, starting with where these bands come from. So on the left, you have a list of the 10 bands with the most song, or sorry, the 10 countries with the most songs related to Carthage in that order. And on the right, you have a list of the top 10 countries ranked by the number of metal bands from them. Right off the bat, you're probably noticing these two lists are a bit different. In particular, countries with some sort of connection to the ancient Mediterranean are overrepresented, especially Italy, Greece, Lebanon, and Tunisia. And I would say Italy is actually substantially more uh, underrepresented than it appears here because most of the Canadian songs about Carthage come from the band Ex Dio, but they talk about Carthage as part of their promotion of their Italian heritage. It's also not just the number of songs uh, from a country that is correlated with that country's connection to the ancient Mediterranean, but also the depth of interest that bands from that country tend to have in Carthage. So even though there are 20 bands from Germany that make songs about Carthage, no German band makes more than a single song on the topic, and only one band from the United States does. There are, on the other hand, numerous Italian and Greek concept albums about Carthage. So to contextualize these numbers a little more broadly, I said there are 264 metal songs about Carthage. Now, on the one hand, that by no means means that uh, Carthage is metal's favorite historical topic. To do just one point of comparison, uh, last year, Jeremy counted 444 metal songs that name a particular Roman emperor. So that substantially outpaces, you know, the entirety of the Carthaginian civilization. But we shouldn't from that conclude that metal's engagement with Carthage is minor or not particularly significant. In 2005, a German scholar, Kailoe, cataloged literature and music about Dido, the uh, mythological queen and founder of the city of Carthage, who most famously appears in Virgil's Aeneid, where she falls in love with the hero Aeneas and commits suicide after he departs Carthage to go to Italy. Dido is usually considered the Carthaginian who most often appears in later literature and art. Between the 15th and 21st centuries, Kailoe collects 302 songs about Dido, focusing on opera, ballet, and various other forms of classical or prestigious music. Metal has almost equaled this total in only four decades. 
which I think really speaks to the level of historical interest in metal music and the need for conferences like this. So what do all those songs talk about? I broke it down here in this pie chart that we will be picking apart for most of the remainder of this presentation. Now, I first wanna say, if you add up the different segments of the pie chart, you're not gonna get the number 264. The reason is I have only included in the pie chart songs that really are about a particular topic connected to Carthage. So in this chart, I've left out vague references to Carthage, as well as 34 songs where unfortunately I just couldn't access the music or lyrics. We'll start with Dido because as I said, she is often considered the most famous aspect of Carthage. In metal, Dido most often appears as part of concept albums about the Aeneid. You can see some examples here. Now, I'm not gonna do a deep dive on these because this is the one aspect of uh, Metal's engagement with Carthage that has already been really successfully studied in two chapters in the Classical Antiquity and Heavy Metal volume uh, by Croft and Slay and Fletcher. So if you wanna read more about Dido and Metal, go check those out. What I do think is interesting though, is that even though Dido is usually considered the most famous aspect of Carthage, when it comes to Metal, her presence is minimal next to that of the Punic Wars. That maybe isn't actually that surprising, though. The focus on the Punic Wars fits some broader trends in metal. Metal music is often interested not only in history in general, but on wars in particular. More often, some scholars have noted that bands that sing about Rome tend to be interested more in history as opposed to bands that sing about Greece, who might take a more mythological bent. It therefore makes sense that bands that want to engage in uh, Rome's history of Carthage zero in on the Punic Wars rather than the more mythological Aeneid. Finally, but also definitely relevant, is just the underrepresentation of women, both as topics in metal music and even more markedly as musicians. But if the Punic Wars are such a big deal, let's talk about them. And I'm going to do a little more context uh, with some aspects of the historical Punic Wars that are going to be referenced before we get to the songs themselves. As I said, the Punic Wars were fought between Rome and Carthage. Uh, the first Punic War was between 264 and 241 BCE, and we're not gonna talk about it that much. It gets overshadowed by the much more famous Second Punic War when Rome faced the Carthaginian general Hannibal. Also relevant is the Third Punic War that was preceded, so our sources tell us, by the Roman Senator Cato the Elder ending every speech he gave in the Senate with Carthago de Lenda Est. Carthage must be destroyed. It's actually probably apocryphal. He probably didn't say those words, but okay, it is in ancient sources, so fair play to the metal bands. This war ends with the destruction of Carthage, though Carthage will later be rebuilt as a Roman city. As I said, the Punic Wars are by far the most common aspect of Carthage discussed in metal, and the two most uh, commonly discussed aspects of them are the Second Punic War, and the kind of conjoined topics of Cato's saying Carthage must be destroyed and, well, the fact that Rome went and did just that. There are, by my count, seven and a half concept albums about the Punic Wars. And I'm aware that half is not usually a uh, number used about concept albums. I'm using it here because the Dios album in Nomine Roma has five songs, so half the album about the Punic Wars, and that seemed like enough engagement uh, to be worth spending some time on. The first question I wanted to look into was what perspective these albums take. In other words, do they focalize the story through a Roman point of view or a Carthaginian point of view? And this is the single thing about uh, preparing this talk that surprised me the most. I expect Rome to dominate, and it doesn't. There's actually a slim but real majority of songs that imagine things from the Carthaginian perspective which is fascinating and is, I think, a clear example about how art and, in this case, metal music in particular, can reimagine perspectives otherwise lost to history. Uh, one more pie chart math note. Uh, in this uh, point of view one, this is, again, not all of the songs even about the Punic Wars, but only songs that really clearly express a point of view. So we do have a slim majority of bands that imagine the Carthaginian perspective. Nonetheless, I still think it is clear that most of these bands are approaching Carthage through Roman history, what we might more broadly call classical history, which is to say Greece and Rome or the stuff you study in most classics departments. 
The first indication of that is even if you're going to take an imagined Carthaginian perspective by making the song about the Punic War, you are privileging not necessarily what Carthage might find significant about its own history, but what Rome finds significant about Carthaginian history. Moreover, about a quarter of the songs that take the Carthaginian perspective are by bands that actually alternate between the Roman and Carthaginian perspective on those concept albums. So yes, we're peeking into Carthaginian eyes, but we're not exclusively doing so. More broadly, a huge proportion of the music dealing with Carthage is by bands specializing in Roman history. So we see this in concept albums by Ade, Ex Dio, and Dios. Also relevant here is the one-man Italian black metal project, Hisperia. All of their music is different concept albums about Roman history, including several about the Aeneid. Uh, and the musician behind that band told me he's interested in Carthage, quote, as one of the greatest enemies of Rome. So if you're approaching the material from that perspective, even if you imagine a song, what would Hannibal be saying about this battle? You're still pretty clearly coming at this through Rome. An interesting partial exception to this is the Greek band Carthage that I'm going to be bringing up several times in this presentation. As you might guess from their name, all of their albums are actually concept albums about different aspects of Carthage's history. Like many other bands, they alternate uh, perspectives, but very frequently take the Carthaginian perspective. Nonetheless, their classical approach is, I think, clear from their stage names, Leonidas and Philip. Now, this approach to Carthage through classical history can sometimes be mixed with some really racist rhetoric. It won't be news to anyone here that unfortunately there are connections between uh, metal and racism and between the appropriation of classical antiquity and racism. So one example of this is the band Sanguis Imperum, who are on the song Scourge of Men, has lyrics such as the filth of Carthage, no enemy more revolting, foul legions of Africa. I do though want to be really clear that a band approaching Carthage through Rome is not per se problematic or even surprising. After all, our sources are exclusively Greco-Roman. Anything with a Carthaginian perspective is ultimately an act of imagination. We don't have an authentic Carthaginian perspective. More broadly, Carthage is usually academically encountered through Roman history courses rather than in its own right. So it's not necessarily surprising or problematic that most bands uh, kind of privilege Carthage's connections to more classical history, but the fact that they do does, I think, make it really interesting when bands take a non-classical approach. So there are two concept albums that take an entirely Carthaginian perspective. The first of them is Lagrima's Hannibal and Portas. It's probably not a coincidence that Lagrima is from Lebanon. Also notable here is Cartagena, whose album's Roma Delenda Est uh, was in part made, as the band says, for preserving their cultural heritage. So really the flip side of Hesperia, an Italian band, preserving their cultural heritage by, by seeing about Carthage as Rome's enemy. Now we have a Tunisian band imagining a Carthaginian perspective. Roma Delenda Est is an interesting album though, because pretty much alone of the concept albums on the Punic Wars, it is not a strict retelling of those wars. That's obvious right from the title, which doesn't quote Cato's Carthage must be destroyed, but inverts it. Now it is Rome that must be destroyed. Uh, the album also gets increasingly imaginative as it goes on. And so there is a track, for instance, that imagines Carthage's contact with Han China. There are also a few bands that take perspectives that are neither Roman nor Carthaginian. And I think the most interesting here are Numidian Killing Machine and Barbaros, both from Algeria and both focusing on the ancient kingdom of Numidia, a kingdom in Africa known for its excellent cavalry. It began the Punic Wars as an ally of Carthage and ended them as an ally of Rome. Worthy of some particular attention as we talk about the Punic Wars is that Cato quote that I've already mentioned several times. Carthago de Linda S. It is quoted in Latin in no fewer than 24 songs about Carthage, but it is also a way for bands to connect ancient and modern topics. So 25 bands riff, again, using Latin, on this phrase to connect this ancient rhetoric to a modern topic. For instance, Pile of Priests, who in their song Deus de Linda S. say not 
Carthage must be destroyed, but God must be destroyed, connecting this to Metal's broader themes of anti-religion. Unfortunately, this violent rallying cry has also, and maybe not so surprisingly, been adopted by some of the more far-right elements in metal and used as an anti-Semitic rallying cry, for instance, on the split albums Israel Delenda Est and Delenda Est Eudica. One more thing I want to talk about with the Punic Wars before moving on to other topics is how these albums deal with chronology. So like I said, there are seven and a half concept albums about the Punic War, and all of them really focus on heroes and battles. I think the clearest indication of that is with the one exception of Cartagena's Roma de Lenda Est album, all of these have at least one and usually far more than one songs that are named directly after a battle. But five of these albums tell the story of the Punic Wars out of order. Most commonly, but not only, inserting that Carthage must be destroyed, quote, into the second Punic War rather than the third. To give just one example of what I'm talking about, here is the track list for the Carthage album Punic Wars. On the left, you have the track list as the band presents it, and on the right, you have what it would be if it was put in chronological order. Now, I actually don't think this is done out of ignorance, which is, I think, clear from the attention to detail that is evident elsewhere in these bands' approach to Carthage and the Punic Wars more broadly. Instead, I think this is a clear sign that what these bands are doing is not narrating history, but rather evoking it. They are zeroing in on dramatic moments and prioritizing narrative and musical pace over historical chronology. The comparison that came to me is these are basically like historical movies or historical fiction, right? You can rejigger the story a little to make it work best in your art form. Okay, but besides the Punic Wars, what else do bands talk about? Well, 15 bands use Carthage as an example of a ruined city. A good example of that is Virgin Steel on their song, The Lesson. Recorded in 1982, making it actually the earliest uh, metal song I know of that engaged with Carthage, even if it was not released until 2018. Relevant lyrics include the ancient city of Carthage perished with little trace, and so my friends, we share the fate of those no destiny awaits. Now, originally this, might seem like a somewhat generic engagement with Carthage, right? Surely we could sub out Carthage for any other ruined city and the lines would mean the same thing. Well, no, because the really fascinating thing with this way that bands are engaging with Carthage is they're engaging with not only what is a kind of metal trope about Carthage, but was an ancient trope about the city of Carthage that comes from Scipio Aemilianus, the Roman general who wins the Third Punic War and destroys Carthage. As one of our ancient writers, Polybius, tells us, Scipio, when he looked upon the city as it was utterly perishing, and in the last throes of its complete destruction, is said to have shed tears and wept openly for his enemies. After being wrapped in thought for long and realizing that all cities, nations, and authorities must, like men, meet their doom. So just like for Scipio, Aemilianus, and Polybius, Virgin Steel and these other bands are using Carthage as a kind of civilization level memento mori in a way to talk about how all civilizations are ultimately uh, temporary. After the Punic Wars, though, the aspect of Carthage most commonly discussed is Carthage's practice of human and even child sacrifice. Now, I do need to note right off the bat, scholars are divided as to whether Carthage does this. And like with everything about Carthage, we can never forget the fact that we do not have any Carthaginian testimony, but exclusively the writings of their bitter enemies who are happy to make them look bad. Nonetheless, it is true and clear that numerous Greco-Roman sources do mention the Carthaginian practice of child sacrifice. For instance, Plutarch. Would it not have been far better for the Carthaginians not to believe in any power or God, rather than to offer such sacrifices as they used to offer Kronos? No, but with full knowledge and understanding, they themselves offered up their own children. There are 29 songs that connect Carthage to human sacrifice or mention the sacrifice of children at the Tophet ritual site. I shouldn't warn you though, this is the area where the boundaries of my data set were blurriest because human sacrifice at a place called the Tophet is also mentioned in the Old Testament, though the Old Testament does not connect the practice to Carthage. The Old Testament has itself, of course, inspired numerous metal bands. So the 29 songs that I mentioned are those that are really clearly about child sacrifice or mention Carthage and exclude vaguer references to human sacrifice or the discussion of the Tafet as some sort of demon. 
There are numerous examples I could give you, but since we are a bunch of academics uh, picking apart these lyrics, I don't think I could do better than ancient rites who write, the Punic god Baal Haman, the center of Carthago religion, demanded human burning flesh in ancient sources is written. Whether dark reality or rumors, opinions are divided to this day. Those are some historically responsible lyrics. <laughs> um, finally, I want to talk briefly about the other history category. And I want to be clear, this is not a miscellaneous category. We put everything that didn't fit another category, but these are references to specific events in Carthaginian history. The category is dominated by the Greek band Carthage, who in their album Pyrrhic Wars talks about Carthage's conflicts with the Greek king Pyrrhus, and in their album Sicilian Wars talks about Carthaginian conflicts on the island of Sicily. Other brands reference Carthage's fall to the Vandals, and so far as I can tell, Judicator alone references medieval Carthage on their song Tomorrow's Sun. So to wrap this up, we've seen that there is sustained uh, engagement with Carthage and metal music over several decades from numerous continents and from almost 40 different countries, but specifically clustered or focalizing around the ancient Mediterranean. Uh, Metal's engagement with Carthage is tied to some broader thematic interests in metal, such as war or with the discussion of human sacrifice, occultism, and anti-religion. Above all, though, I want to emphasize just what an incredible resource uh, metal's engagement with Carthage is for thinking about what this ancient civilization means to people today. Thank you. <laughs>